on right now. He's uh, he's a special guy here in Southern California, and uh, we we have to cut away and go to him right now. Absolutely, we've got him online. Absolutely, we have to welcome Kevin Demoff, the 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 chief ex operating officer for the Los Angeles Rams. And uh, Jackie, you know, we got to see Kevin. Hopefully, he'll be on TV here, and uh, we've got him on our on point show. So, Kevin, welcome, welcome to the show. I was saying that you were just starting to get rolling on the quarterback conversation. Yeah, that's right. We were starting to talk about the quarterback. Yeah, Kevin, but, but, but now that we have you, my friend, we want to talk about you. <laughs> we want to talk about you and your organization. Kevin, I'm, I'm, I'm particularly excited about having you on here with us, and uh, we really appreciate you joining us uh, from your busy schedule and all of that. And, and I just, you know, Vince and I have been sitting here watching the Rams organization over the last few years, and it, it has really amazed us at some of the things that you have been able to get accomplished for this organization and certainly for, for this city. I'm, not, I'm just going to name a couple of these things, uh, Kevin, and, and don't, I know you can't, can't be bored hearing this stuff, but, you know, you, you the Fritz Pollard Alliance just uh, honored you with the Art Rooney Lifetime Achievement Award. And that is for improving the workplace surrounding the game of football. That's just that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, when, we, when Vince and I were talking about some of the things you've done, we looked at you moving the team here uh, from St. Louis. That had to be done. You had to have a place for the team to play. So you had to negotiate and deal with the people over there at the L.A. Coliseum. And then all while this is going on, you're in the process of building a $5 billion stadium that is probably like no other stadium in our entire country, SoFi Stadium over there. And then on top of all of that, you've hired perhaps the best young offensive mind in the game of pro football and Sean McVay. You've, and you've gotten him sold up and back in the organization. You've retained the services of a pretty good personnel guy and Les Snead. And all while doing all this, this team has managed to win. They've gone to two Super Bowls, won one of them, and all of this has been underneath your guidance. And I, I just, uh, you know, I just, I'm a, first of all, congratulations to you on all of that. And share with us, which of these particular uh, accomplishments was the most difficult for you uh, during the process? It's, a, it's an amazing question. Nice to hear all those things. I had brown hair before I started that whole <laughs> process, right? So this is Jack Chess. Look, I, I think they all go hand in hand. To, to some degree. And when you build a franchise, it starts with getting the right people, Sean, Les, the amazing staff we have, uh, the people who helped build SoFi Stadium, Jason Gannon, all of that crew, you know, the imagination that Stan Kroenke had to bring a team back to Los Angeles and to really invest in our success on and off the field. It all goes hand in hand. You can't have a winning franchise without great talent in the building leading it. You can't have uh, a great stadium project without great fans who bring it to life on a daily basis. And all of that really comes to life with an organization that believes in growing the fan base, putting a great product on the field and playing in the best stadium in the world. And when you do all of that, you've got a chance to be competitive. We've been competitive now uh, for a few years and can't wait to get back to playing playoff football at SoFi Stadium. Wow. Uh, Kevin, I have to tell you something. Thanks for being on. But, uh, you know, Jackie and I have been longtime Ram fans and uh, ever since we played in Los Angeles. And uh, recently, you know, we've uh, covered the Rams in local television and you went to two Super Bowls. So uh, we think we had uh, we maybe we we're a little bit of uh, the lucky side of the, of the Rams and uh, we're we're wishing you the best. But uh, my question is, as a sweet holder to you. Uh, in March, we got a letter uh, that, uh, that you sent out outlining your position moving forward for this coming year and in the future. And to be honest, Jackie and I, we were less than hopeful, but we didn't know if there was going to be that much improvement. But after the draft, we saw how strategic in the approach that you took in this draft, and we're both now very optimistic about the, the turn of events. Um, what's your feeling about the team now? Look, I'm really excited about this year's team, and it may be different. We sent the letter in March because, you know, we've always been one of the biggest, most active teams in the offseason, whether it's big trades, signing players. And this year we were taking a different approach, and we thought it was important to tell our fans exactly what was going on, that this team was going to take a pause from some of the splash things you had seen this year, uh, get our financial house in order, and really rebuild – you know, through the draft this year. And I don't view this as a rebuild, and I know Les has stayed away from that word. But for this year only, 
that we were going to rely upon the draft as our main avenue of adding players. And, you know, we've had a tremendous run of success over the past six years, being most wins in the NFC when you include the playoffs, three division titles, two Super Bowls, a Super Bowl title, four playoff appearances. But it has taken a significant toll on our resources. And as we went into this offseason, we didn't have the salary cap space or flexibility, nor necessarily a first round draft pick to really go figure out how we made a difference. And so some of this was about how do we go put a new team on the field this year that can be competitive and lay the groundwork for another five, six year run like the one we just had. And I think the first thought was, you know, and I think Jack, will appreciate this. Like we need to get better up front on both sides of the football. And I think when you look at this draft, it was about the offensive and defensive lines. Uh, you know, the, certainly the offensive line, I would say the pass rush on the defensive side to go with some of the guys we drafted over the past few years, certainly to pair on the defensive side with Aaron Donald uh, to get Matthew Stafford that chance to stay healthy because we've seen when he's healthy, what he can do for this. Absolutely. Team. And I think Absolutely. that was really, okay. you know, the focal point to get add bodies there to make us more competitive. You know, we're going to believe in the talent we've assembled everywhere else. And I think we're excited, you know, this year, I fully believe this is a playoff team and people may think I'm delusional with it. We're crazy, but I look at last year, the way we finished that season, we went to Seattle week 18, you know, took the Seahawks who were a playoff team toe to toe in overtime and win if it's not for a terrible, you know, roughing the punter call, which was Lee told us was a mistake. Uh, you look at how we finished the season with wins over the Raiders and the Broncos and not that they were great teams last year, but really resounding football at the end of the year with a team that was pretty beaten up. And you get our guys back healthy. You get a healthy Matthew Stafford, who's one of the top quarterbacks in the NFC and in the NFL, when healthy. You get a Cooper Cup back. You get an Aaron Donald back. And you really get a chance to build the youth and develop it. I think we got a real shot this year in the NFC. Wow, Kevin. You know what? I, I got to tell you that I'm impressed with the comprehensive awareness that you yeah. just expressed. But they filled all the top priorities. Jackson. Oh, definitely, it, definitely. They strengthened their team. Absolutely. Sure. With the comprehensive awareness you are, you have as an administrator about what's going on with the team, what should be happening, what shouldn't be happening. And I, I mean, that's just, it, it's, it's a confidence builder for me. And the reason why I will share with you that I have needed my confidence built is because there is a rumor going around that I want to bring up with you. Uh, that rumor has it that the Washington Commanders are in need of a COO and that you are one of the top candidates to be considered for that job. Now, before you answer, before you answer the questions, the thing that makes Vince and I lean into a rumor like that are these facts. The Washington Commanders have been a dismally run football team for a number of years. The fan base there is not pleased with the way things are going in the organization. They have not won consistently since way back in the 80s and the 90s. They haven't had a, a field of a great team. And they just had one problem after the other. They are planning right now to build a new stadium. Uh, and Kevin, you know, when you look at the, all of the things that need to transpire to get Washington back on foot, the leadership role that they're going to have to hire you just hit all of the nails on the head. It's, I mean, there's nothing that they need to have happen to get them back on foot. Nothing beyond anything that, everything that you have already done, everything that you have already accomplished. And I, I just think that, um, you know, Vince and I need to be reassured so we can reassure our fans that we're not going to be losing uh, the best COO in all of pro football to the Washington. Now, to, to, to augment what I just said, I would say this. For the last six years, we have watched Magic Johnson at the Coliseum and at SoFi. He's a big Ram fan. He loves football. And Magic Johnson is a minority owner with the Commander's new ownership group. And I can think of no other contribution greater that Magic Johnson could make right off the top than to recommend you for the COO of that organization in light of the fact that he has seen all of the work that you've done since in the last six years. And that is, that my friend is one of the things that gives meat to this rumor to Vince, for Vince and I, and, and, and quite frankly, it concerns us. Is that a question, Jack? Yeah. Or is that just a, you know, let us a little thing? Well, I, I will say- Is he asking you? Well, what knows. I'm asking you, what I want, what I'm asking you is, are you in contention for going to the Washington Commanders 
And you see, I just listed all of the reasons why they you wanna. would be the guy that they would peg for the job. Well, I, the problem with that, Jackie, is they have a pretty good president in Jason Wright, who's a friend who I think does a great job there. And I'd be excited to see what he could do uh, if the new ownership passes. But otherwise, you know, I would say you guys are stuck with me. And, you know, the one thing the Redskins, or I should say the commanders don't mm -hmm. have, they don't have alumni like, you know, Jackie Slater and Vince Ferragamo. So, <laughs> you know, I don't know how, I don't know how I you could leave this, <laughs> you know, I don't know how you could leave, you know, a, a group like this. But Absolutely. I have, yeah. no, Absolutely. I have no interest in, I have no interest in being any other team besides the Rams. They have a great group there that's working. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens with the potential sale. It's a great franchise. The better they are, the better our league is. But, you know, I was going to ask you guys, I'm more concerned that both of you guys are wearing Raiders gear. Oh, you know, oh black and silver. I'm wearing the black. Man, Absolutely. Man, I'm I got black this, it, this is charcoal. This is not, <laughs> he's got a black and gray. I'm, I'm wearing charcoal here. Hey, Just I, got a little bit. I feel like I'm. I look at this set and I feel like I'm on a Raiders pregame show. <laughs> yeah, I got the mafia clothes on here. Kevin, you know me. I'm Italian, right? You you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about that one, Kevin. We're 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 Rams fans from the word gate say go. We can't we can't help it. It's just in our blood at this point in time. And and I'm delighted to hear you, you know, you share those comments because they they've been a little bit concerning. Vince and I, as we prepare yeah. for this particular show, well, we're, relieved hope, yeah, we're relieved now. We're relieved with, yeah. with hopes of sure. you coming on. You know, some of these questions are kind of difficult. And I know this your personal business. The first thing Vince said is, hey, man, this guy is competitive just like everybody else. He wants to show that, I mean, if he did it here in L.A., he can do it in D.C. And why not? You know, the table is set for him. So we've been entertaining all of these ideas, all these possibilities. And, and for you to kind of put that to rest for us and Ram fans in L.A., and around the country is really, really good. It's good news to well, hear. I, I really look, Jackie, I would tell you. Thompson. Go ahead, yeah, Kevin. Magic has this, you know, Magic has the suite next to Stan's ownership suite. Yeah. Uh, and he's probably watched me freak out during games. There's no chance he would want to hire me <laughs> if you watch me I don't know during about any that, of Kevin. our home games. I'm surprised that, that Stan even keeps me with, you know. The, you know, what a nervous wreck I am during all of our games. So, well, we're, we're you know, glad that you're with the Rams and you, you're going to stay put. We appreciate your honesty, Kevin. But we have before we close, Kevin, uh, you know, I was talking to Jack and he was telling me about. Oh, my goodness. About when he knew you back in the day when you guys both worked at Fox and you were in a production meeting. And um, Jackie said something to you. I don't know if he asked you or he told you to go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> now, is that true? Did he tell you to go get something for him? I coffee and a donut, food. Vince. Coffee and a donut. <laughs> well, yeah, it had to be food. And a donut. <laughs> well, you know, let, let, let's be honest. At the time, I was a 22-year-old peon, and Jackie Slater is a Hall of Famer. So you just do man, whatever Jackie. Jackie says. But... You know, yeah. the best part is, Vince, and I'll, I'll embarrass him now. Anytime, okay. like, something goes wrong, he's like, hey, are you mad at me because I asked you, you know, to go fetch me a cup of coffee? And I'm like, no, Jack, it's never crossed my mind at all. See, Jack, you could have asked but, him, Jack. You didn't have to tell him well, to go get it. Well, you know, now, what about that? No. <laughs> well, you know, I'm happy to hear that I didn't offend you, Kevin. You know, I was always about having some fun and inviting yeah, people. Well, that was my way of inviting you on into the group because I remember him. that being oh, your I, first day. But one of the things, oh, Kevin. Hate, Go ahead. One, one of the best analysts of all time. The, I still have my NFL This Morning t-shirt. Four years, you know, got to work yeah. side by side. It was awesome. It what was. What a great education. Time. We time. spent time it, with Chris Spielman, Jackie Slater, Deacon yeah. Jones, Michael Irvin, Marv Levy. I yeah, want an yeah. education in football every weekend. Oh, yeah. That was well, an education in football. We, yeah. we had we, we had a Marv must have been fun. Marv Levy. Oh, yeah. Marv, sure was Marv, Marv. Marv was very, very He's good. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Marv, Marv was very good. Buffalo Bills. Well, well, you know, uh, Kevin um, – I have this list of things, and I, I might I might write a book. I've got a lot of people encouraging me to, but I have this list of things that you should never do if you aspire to be, be involved with a, a, an NFL franchise. The first thing you should never do, and you should do with very much caution and consideration, is tell the future COO oh. of the team at some <laughs> point in time to go get you a cup of coffee. <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> then the next thing you should never do is get on a bus after you just shut out Joe Montana and the Kansas City Chiefs and yeah. see Stan Kroenke sitting on the front seat and not knowing who he is 
and be prepared to tell him, you got to get up and go back there because that's where the car dealers sit. So if you don't do those two things, you might have a good chance. I did not I did not do that with Stan. I, I, good some, thing. Something at the last minute said, hey, Jackie, just, just be nice. So I said, hey, uh, you mind, yeah. mind if I sit here? So I sit next to Stan. <laughs> the whole time I'm thinking he's a car dealer and I'm wanting him to go in the back of the bus and sit with, yeah. the, with, sit with the uh, car dealers. We get to the tarmac. They pull the they pull the bus over. Stan gets out, and he starts walking towards a jet. And then um, our our vice president at that time comes walking up to me, and he said, "Jackie, he said, what do you think about Stan?" And I said, "Who?" He said, "What do you think about Stan Crunky, the guy that just bought the team?" I said, the man, "You mean the man that was sitting here next to me?" <laughs> he said, "Yeah, he just bought the team." And I'm thinking to myself, "Thank you, Lord," because I was just about to tell him, "Man, you got to get your rear end up and go in the back of the bus." Kevin, that's really a what in the world? <laughs> that is okay? what in the world. That's all I can say. What in the world? That is yeah, a what in the world. world. Uh, I, I, you know, one of the things, Kevin, I will share with you that I loved about what Snead did this past year's draft is that he went for. A, a an intangible element that I think is critical to be on any football team, and that's leadership. He drafted all a bunch of young leaders that are going to come in, and they're going to. I think they're going to. Their production, the young class of this year, is going to be very surprising at how productive they are, simply because of the quality of the people that's, that I you guys I was just going to say, Jackie, because not only were they did they quantify this draft because they had 14 picks. Right. Got a but, lot of volume. But a lot it was of volume. quality picks, Jackie. Absolutely. And so I think these guys are all going to contribute to this team, and that's what it takes. It get, takes a great team effort. Absolutely. Again, Kevin, thank you so much for being on the show today. We look forward to seeing you this year at SoFi. My pleasure, guys. And, you know, hopefully those cups of coffee, the people who got them for you on the desk, they did a great job. <laughs> it's water, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah, it's water. All right. water. All right, here to you, Kevin. Right, Have a good one. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Salute. He's a great, great guy. Isn't he? Yeah, I really like Kevin. And, you know, he's a busy guy. Yeah. And uh, I know his schedule is full. And I and when I asked him about coming on with us, he, you know, I gave him plenty of time to decide when it was when it would be he would be available. And he got back with me, and yeah, and everything just fell in place. I'm delighted to. Certainly for Ram fans, literally here in Southern California and around the country, Vince, to hear from the top guy and one of the top minds in all yeah. of pro football relative to understanding all of the pieces that have to be in place for an organization to be successful, to have Kevin Demoff on the show and to share some of his insights with our fans, I think was huge, huge, and we'll, we'll, we'll ever, forever be indebted to and, him for that. And Jackie, you know, we also have to say how great his dad has been all those years. Oh, Mark yes, Demoff. absolutely. And, you know, he, he was an agent. He learned. He was what a great mentor to have as a dad. You absolutely. Know, a, great, a great lawyer, an agent, represented Jack Youngblood, Pat Hayden. A lot of guys. A lot, a lot of, of guys, guys on in the NFL. So, uh, you know, Kevin really uh, followed in great footsteps there. Yes, he certainly he did. did. And, and the expectations. You, you know, you, yeah. the, the kid was around it all of his life. His expectations were to be special in whatever he did because that's what he saw his dad do. Right.